go. All right. Good morning, everybody. Hello. Hello. Hi. Good morning. All right. We'll begin. We begin our devotion in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So for our devotions, we've been talking about the book of Genesis, and we talk about the book of Genesis, and it's a book of what, Lydia? Beginnings, right. And in the beginning, there was just God, but then God made the heavens and the earth. And on day one, there was, oh, what, Sam? Darkness. And then God said, what, Callista? Light. All right. God said that let there be light, and he saw there, there was light, and God saw that the light was good. And when we think about that good light that started on the first day, who should we also be thinking about when we think about that? Thea. God. Okay, God made the light. Rosie. Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. All right, and then last week we talked about day two of creation. And what did God make on day two of creation? Levi? Uh, hand went down. Rebecca? Hand went down. Now it's back up. Yes, he separated the waters above from the waters beneath. And as we think about how high the sky is, what should we remember? Mm, that's a harder one. Melina? Well, oh, that's kind of a half a hand. It's a... Levi, remember this one? Yes, that's, that is true. That wasn't the point I was making last week, though. Ranger, do you remember? No? Okay. Uh, Grace? It would take one hour to get out of the atmosphere. Okay, so that's pretty high. But when we think about how high the sky is, what should we remember about God and his relationship with us? I'll give you the psalm. So as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his, his love toward those who fear him. Okay, so day two of creation is complete. We have light. We have sky. We have the water above separated from the water below. So maybe it would have looked something like this. So as you look at planet Earth, what seems to be missing from the picture? Marissa. The land. So we get to day three, and God says, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered into one place, and let the dry land appear. So remember, there was water above and water below, but God says we're going to gather the water into one place, and dry land is going to appear. So maybe it would have looked a little bit like this. So there's your water separated into one place, and the dry land separated into another place. What's that? It's orange. Yeah, I think it's how the picture on my screen here, it's a little brown, more brown. But it's not very pretty, is it? No. Something's missing still when the dry land appears. What are we used to seeing when we look at the earth like this? Isla. Grass. Uh, what else? Amber. Plants. Grass and plants and ranger. Trees. Okay. So day three, God makes the dry land appear. And then he says, let the earth sprout vegetation Plants yielding seed and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. So now things get prettier, right? I mean, the dry land is pretty amazing, but it's even prettier when you get all the vegetation on it, right? So this has a beauty of its own, I guess, but that's even more beautiful. So God is getting the earth ready for something. So why are plants and trees 
and vegetation such a blessing to us? Melina. Okay, but God hasn't created grass, uh, cows yet, so we can't talk about cows yet. But we know there'll be cows. Yeah, so it's a blessing because it provides food, and it feeds our food that we eat. Good. Other blessings that plants bring us. So food might be one thing. Uh, I love Oxygen. So plants breathe. <laughs> <laughs> kind of in a way. Did you know, you know how many trees it takes for, to keep one person alive for a year? I had to look this up this morning. You want to guess, Thea? What? 5,000. 5, You're a 5,000 person. Rebecca is a 6,000 person. Everything's 6,000 million, everything. Uh, Rosie? That's less than 5,000. More than one. Five? Callista? 50. Less than 50. Lydia? 48. Less than 48. Micah? 10. Oh, you're getting closer. Seven to eight trees. Seven to eight trees can keep one person alive for one year. So they say, I don't know how they know that, but... They can do the crunch the numbers. So trees are really important because they produce oxygen and we breathe in oxygen. So oxygen is very important to us. So think of all the things that the trees are a blessing to us. They're beautiful to look at. So when God made the trees, anybody know what kind of trees these are? They're very, very tall. Abigail? These are California redwoods and they're very, 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 very tall. When God made them, he didn't make them this tall. They were full-grown trees when he made them. Can you imagine a planet with just little seedlings poking out of the ground? When God made them on day three, they were full-grown trees, like they had been there for hundreds of years. So we're used to the redwoods. Around here, whoa, we're used to our big oak trees, right? Big, majestic oak trees. Uh, like Melina said, we get food from our trees. Like my favorite, when they're nice and ripe, are peaches. We can also plant gardens, and we can grow vegetables, food to eat. And some plants, well, some plants are just plain pretty. So think of that. When you think of God making all these things, he didn't just give us dry ground to live on. He gave us this beautiful, lush, green creation to live in. So when we think about God making the trees. We think of all the blessings that come from those plants and from those trees. We can use the wood from the trees to build houses and to build pews like you're sitting in. So all the blessings that come on day three with the things God made. But when we think about God making trees and trees are made out of what, Lydia? Wood. Can that make us start to think about another blessing that comes from trees made of wood? Anybody think of this? Okay, you can put your hands down. As you all know what this is. This is a cross, and the cross was made out of wood. And wood comes from trees that God made on day three. And how many, of, how many people of the triune God were active at creation? Emma. All three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So think about that. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are making trees on day three. And on the day of uh, Good Friday, when Jesus is crucified on a wooden tree taken from a cross that God had made, the very Son of God who created the trees that the cross is made out of is nailed to the cross. The Bible says... Cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree. Was Jesus on a tree? Yeah. Yes. How so, Leah? Yes, you got it. The cross is made out of the wood of a tree. And when Jesus was nailed to the cross, he was hanged on a tree. And God says everyone who is hanged on a tree is cursed. cursed. So we think about this. 
Jesus on a wooden cross is cursed. Why would the Son of God who made the trees allow himself to be nailed to a tree? Well, the rest of the passage says this. Christ redeemed us, or he bought us back from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree. So on the cross, Jesus became the curse of all of our sin. God cursed his son so that we could be forgiven. So that the curse for our sins would be removed from us. The curse of our sin... What is it we deserve because of our sin, Tanner? Death. Where? In hell. In hell. That's the ultimate curse for sin. And on the wooden cross, Jesus took that curse on himself to remove it from us. So trees are beautiful, aren't they? Trees are wonderful, but the most wonderful thing God did with a wooden tree was to nail his son to it so that we could be forgiven. So when you think about day three, when you think about the dry land God created and the trees God created that we appreciate so much that produce food and oxygen and plants and are just beautiful to look at, think of the most beautiful tree that has ever been used on this earth in which the most horrible thing that ever happened was a blessing for us. That Jesus became a curse on the cross so that we could be forgiven. What a blessing. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we are in awe of your marvelous creation. The majestic trees, the beautiful flowers, the wonderful food you've created for us, all through those plants on day three. But especially we marvel at the tree of the cross, on which you were nailed, and on which you died in order to forgive all of our sins. As we rejoice in your creation, Help us to rejoice especially in the salvation you won for us by your death on that wooden cross and by your resurrection on Easter morning. Bless our day today. Help us to continue to grow as your children in knowledge of your will and of all the things you have done and made for us. All this we ask, O Jesus, in your name, even as we pray together as you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So this summer in our Vacation Bible School, we sang a song about uh, how great God is, how great thou art. You guys remember, some of, most of you remember that one? All right, so one of the verses that we skipped this summer sings about the trees. So we're going to sing about that, and then we're going to sing about God not sparing his son. So we'll sing two verses of how great thou art, and we talk about walking through the woods and the forest hearing the birds sing, and thinking about how amazing God is. But especially when we think about how amazing God is, is when we think that he sent his son Jesus to die for us. So, we have a brief introduction, and then we'll sing two verses of How Great Thou Art.
And stream is done. Caitlin?